Wake Up MLS Match Day 26. Man, this season is absolutely flying by. We got predictions on the agenda for today for those who are brand new to the show. The format's really simple, very simple. We are going to dive into and preview five specific matchups on this video today. Break down who we like, why we like them, why we think the other team might lose. And then towards the very end, we will do quick fire predictions, reel off the remaining nine matchups coming this Saturday as part of Major League Soccer Match Day 26. And as usual, I am joined by a constantly rotating cast and crew. Another great one on the show for tonight. We have Hitman Honda, our LA Galaxy fan, join the show. Welcome in, brother. We have Davi. He's been on the show more than a few times now. Blue Burrows Pod, NYCFC fan. And then, of course, first time I wake up MLS, but he has appeared on the Goals TV channel before. We have Musa, a.k.a. Mo Football, St. Louis City SC fan. Mo, welcome to the show, bro. I appreciate you being here. Look, man, I uh, I got a feeling the uh, the St. Louis City faithful are going to be well represented on the on Wake Up MLS tonight, man. So let's get after it, lads. We're going to have a good time with this one. The very first matchup on our agenda for today, it's a juicy one, in my opinion, anyway, as, as much as I tune into the East this year. We have one team in rampant form and another team that surprised many fans in the, in the league up to this point. We have Cincinnati hosting Charlotte. Cincinnati, look, man, top of the East, coming off of a shellacking of Inter Miami, six to one. If you guys didn't catch that game, go watch the highlights. There are plenty of them. Um, and then, of course, you have Charlotte continuing to turn heads. But they're going to be on the road. They are a top six team in the East. They haven't played in uh, just about over a week now, right? So they've had some rest. The last game they had was against Miami, right? So both these teams kind of in that boat. It came right before the fourth. They lost two one. Listen, guys, this this matchup to me is, I think pretty juicy from the neutral fans perspective i think you get two completely different sides here right one that has figured out how to play without some of the prolific attackers they had last season um and without their two starting center backs and fc cincinnati still finding a way to get the job done no miatska no Haglin, doesn't matter and then you have charlotte fc who have completely looked revamped under dean smith but still kind of missing that that cutting edge right they're not uh, quite as clinical up front as Cincinnati, but have proven to be very hard to score on. Um, look, let's start with uh, with with Honda on this one first. We'll kind of, we'll kind of work our way around to see who disagrees. Honda, man, how do you feel about this matchup? Considering that you, you know you're just like me, bro. You're on the west side. You're a neutral fan for this one. Who do you have taking it? This is the battle of the defenses, right? Whoever leaks the least amount of like mistakes will probably be taking this matchup. And since I, and again, it's an MLS take, but the home team, I feel like, is going to take it again, especially after they slagged into Miami. It doesn't matter if they don't have Messi, Suarez, right? They still have great players. They were coming in on form just to go to Cincy and get slapped up 6-1. I think Cincy wins. And I think it's probably going to be like a 2-1. I don't think it's going to be like a lot of goals. I may be wrong again, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I, you know what? I kind of... I kind of disagree a little bit, but only because I think Lucho right now is finding his form, man. And yeah. you know what's crazy? I don't know if you guys saw this on Match Day 25 video. If you have not watched that video, go check it out because I think some of what I'm about to say really kind of teased this up well, especially in the comments. I got into an argument with somebody in the comments regarding Lucho Acosta and how we mentioned that there kind of is this MVP race and, of course, with All-Star around the corner, an All-Star captaincy race between Lucho and Messi. And I'll, I'll I'll be the hot take merchant today. I mean, I, I really think Lucho is making a strong case to overtake Messi in a lot of different ways. I know Messi's not playing at the moment, right? He's with Argentina in the Copa America final, and that's great for him and his nation. But MLS doesn't stop. We keep this show rolling. Uh, and Lucho has, with less weapons than he had last season, is having basically the same year. Basically the same year with goals and con you know contributions, goals and assists, the impact he has in the field stepping up in a way that I didn't even know was possible after the 2023 year that he had. It's wild, man. I, I think they, there could be combining with, with, with him and, and, and Oriano. I think there could be a lot of goals in this one. If Charlotte lets it get out of hand. Yeah, fair, fair enough. And you know what, to be honest, he needed to step up as well too, because again, like you said, they lost key players up front, mm -hmm. but as well, it's not like they're missing them as of right now. We yeah. haven't seen them like miss any of those attacking players, which again, we saw in the last game that they had. Yeah, I was yeah. to Lucho definitely, and especially I think when I saw them going into Miami, uh, you know, play against Miami, I was like, Miami's in form, Messi's not there, Suarez's not there, and they're winning. I thought it was going to be a, a much closer game, but when I watched it and I saw them literally just get swoop them pretty much, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I hate to say it, but I was like, yeah, since he's the real deal, um, coming into that game, so I'll definitely. 
I'll give them their props, which might not work too well for me later on. But <laughs> do you do you, so? You back them in this game then? Yes, I I definitely would give them that one. They they look a lot more informed, and you know, going six to one that that gives you the confidence into going back home to win it all again. Yeah, I I think it's interesting. Um, and look, the one East Coaster here, right, Davi. You you watch these teams. Um, you played against them, right? For being an NYCFC fan, look, man, Charlotte have scored seven goals in the last five away matches. That's not even that bad, really, when you think about who they were, even as recently as last season. You having watched these two teams play pretty heavily, do you see any lifeline? And I say lifeline loosely, right? I don't think it's it's a situation where Cincinnati will absolutely smoke them, but it could be, right, with the form that they're in. Do you see any silver linings for Charlotte FC, Dubby? It's MLS. MLS is good at MLS. That's the ultimate silver lining in this league. But yeah. you can come you can come off a six one performance at home, and then you could go ahead and drop the ball in the next performance and you know lose lose whether it be down a player or you get you know you get absolutely fucked over by the refs, the incompetent pro referees, or <laughs> or or maybe you just um maybe you just it's one of those games where it's like it's an anomaly and you just don't play as well. you it's not a not your day at the office per se. Fair, but, fair, fair. Um, but yeah, I think Lucho Acosta, I mean, goal and assist, I mean, even though that looks very little, but I think like outside of the stats, the base stats, the goals and assists, he played really well. 9.1 on FOTMOB, fan of the match. Um, and then, I mean, he's, it's not just him that you have to worry. You've got to worry about the other things. you got Oriano, you have to worry about Yumil Asad. He could still do it. Yeah. Remember him? Uh, Kubo. Kubo, who's like, to me, he's like looked like a forgotten man and he just pops up out of nowhere and starts scoring these goals. And then, of course, you got the the young striker from Venezuela, Kevin Kelsey, who was was the replacement for uh, Brandon Vasquez, who went over to Mexico. And, you know, this kid from Venezuela, he just came in and started scoring them immediately. So the, yeah. and people are already calling him already. People are already saying he's already better than Brandon Vasquez. That's wild. Oh. That's wild. But, you know, two names that stuck out there in a big, big way. I agree with you, Davi. I think that the, the two biggest names right now that everyone's talking about are, of course, Lucho, but then Oriano, right? Like, the left back from hell if you're on the opposing side. I mean, this 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 kid's like he looks so good, man. A Swiss Army knife kind of do it all. Somehow is an outside back, like a wing back, but attacks more than just about anybody outside of Lucho on the pitch. Does Cincinnati kind of like, like Barriol? Kind of like Barriol last season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly, bro, uh, this might be a crazy show. Barriol was good and he deserved his move abroad, right? But Oriano looks like he's gonna be right there and maybe even surpass what's what some of the things that we were seeing. On the pitch from Barrio, I, I I liked him a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that, you know, Lucas he's inspiring me a little bit, Oriano. You know, and and, and I had this funny conversation about Cincinnati the other day, and I, I kind of want to get your y'all's take on it. Does Cincinnati have the two best Argentines, or at least the two most informed Argentines in the league at, at, at this very moment? Yeah, I mean, Messi's kind of it's kind of been ghosting, not up to his usual self in Copa America, but his team's there to pick him up and. You know, the, you know, he fought for them at the World Cup, and they fought for him back. So I guess they're. Yeah, I was gonna say game. if you're talking about right now, right now, yes, definitely. Yeah, it's it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that meme with like the Ninja Turtles with like the like their master. <laughs> it's like everyone's all grown up and they're they're carrying Messi to the finish line. I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see him win another Copa, but that's besides the point. But I mean, yeah, Inter Miami, they just got they just got completely rocked. I mean, Busquets two point nine. Oh my god, I just saw that <laughs> two point nine on Fat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He did not. Uh, he he had a day. We'll just put it that way, dude. They, yeah. I mean, honestly, it was everywhere. Every everybody was was getting rocked by these two Argentines, and, and like it's kind of a hot take question, right? But like with Messi, I, I don't expect him to come back and just automatically start dominating. I mean, I love Messi. I'm a Barcelona fan through and through. Literally, like man, he's he's hanging up on my wall behind me, right? Like he, he needs a, he needs a break as well. He needs a break. Yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah, old. You know, he's, his legs are not necessarily there. Suarez gonna be kind of the same thing, which is why I asked the question. Like the two best Argentines in the league, I, I think Cincinnati might have them. I, I don't think it's a crazy shout right now with how well you know Oriano and Lucho Acosta are playing right now. It's, I think it, I think it's undisputed at this. I think at the last, I think it's undisputed. Like you yeah. don't. Yeah, I mean, Messi. Yeah, Messi might be the goat, but that's only one Argentine. And, but, yeah, I'm looking at the other teams, and nah, man, like there's nobody that comes even near it. Like it's crazy, bro. It's wild, man. I mean, like, like I said, you know, they got two guys that you know will probably get call ups if they were playing for like another country. That just shows you how stacked Argentina is. Um, but yeah, man, it's 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 an interesting thought. Like to think that that we could have a conversation about the best Argentines in this league and Messi's not necessarily in that right now. So yeah, I don't know, man. It's wild. It's wild. We might get flamed in this video. It is what it is. But at, at the same time, you have to respect what these two guys are doing up in Cincinnati. 
Pat Noonan, by the way, also deserves a ton of flowers for how he's been able to get his team to perform despite losing guys like Niaska for the rest of the season. Hagelin's out. His two starting center backs gone and not missing a beat, only conceding one goal to enter Miami. I think we all fully expect them to beat Charlotte FC, but hopefully Charlotte can make it a game. All right, lads, let's move on. Let's move on to our second matchup of the day. Uh, I thought I had a play. Dobby's going to have a lot to say about this one. And to me, this is potentially, potentially trap game potential. Like, just, it's, it's I don't know. Dobby, you said it yourself, man. Like, MLS has weird vibes. One minute, you can be top of the world. The next, it brings you right back down, humbles you in a big way. And I, I think each of these teams are in similar form at the very moment. Not across the entire season, but more specifically the last few weeks. Chicago. They are where they are, right? 5, 6, and 11, 21 points, 13 in the East. After coming back on Philadelphia at home, right? Uh, and while we were recording Match Day 25's episode, we watched J John on camera freak He's just out. losing his shit on camera. Yeah, He's like, yeah freak out uh, during the show. And, and it was awesome. I, I thought maybe it was a turning of the tide. They go to San Jose, but after, fresh off the firing of Luchi Gonzalez, and <clears throat> they lose one no. And I watched that game, actually. The very... <laughs> Very you horrible game. Worst. Horrible game. That's crazy. It was cool. wild, man. I, I can only imagine what John was thinking, bro. The upset. I mean, honestly, it's, it's not too far from my Dallas, to be that honest. That stadium was empty. It was probably, <laughs> of course they have to say. Yeah, it, was probably, it was probably 12 people at that stadium. Yeah, it's it's wild, man. Um, and I don't know what the weather's like you know, right now over there, but uh, but at the end of the day, there's just there's not a lot to cheer about in San Jose. Um, and at the same time, right, New York City FC, you know, I thought maybe they could kind of go down to the Q2, get a draw. It didn't work out that way. Davi, you guys somehow let Giassi Zardes um, really kind of reestablish himself in this league. I, 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 I saw that shit coming from a mile away. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's, there's some. I, I know that um, if you're an NYCFC fan, you, you know who I'm about to uh, subtly acknowledge. But there's this certain guy on Twitter, self-proclaimed NYCFC historian. I know I know this club better than probably 90 percent of this fan base ever, ever will be. And that's not that's Fair. not me trying to be a dick or anything. But I just think. I just think I just consume a lot of this, this product, this club. I just love this club. And, you know, just to see something like that. It's, it's the most NYCFC thing ever. <laughs> along along with getting, along, along with conceding in the 94th minute uh, equalizer in the final. Bro. Heartbreaker, bro. Yeah, I mean. And yeah, just Giassi Zardes of all players, it's just, bro. Yeah, not yeah. even a lot. I dragged you this player. This club, yeah, me and Honda oh. have dragged this that's player. His, that's his show. first two. That's his first two goals of the season. His yeah. first two no, goals of the saying. season. That's what I'm and saying. he's it's already in the so top. And, and so thanks wild, to us, man. he's in the top 10. He's in the top 10 of all, <laughs> of all time MLS goal scorers now. Thanks to us. Yeah. So. I mean, look, it, it was bound to happen. I even told uh, Honda last, like, last time you and I talked about him. I even mentioned, like, look, man, he's got over a century of goals in this league. Like, you know, you got to respect his. Well, now he's in the top 10. Yes, yeah, but you got to respect his longevity. Us. It's just that for a year and a half, almost two years now, he hasn't really done anything in Austin. And it's just like, man, out of nowhere, he comes up, becomes relevant, becomes the hero for Austin FC. Um, at a, in a time where they needed a hero to step up because the last few weeks, losing Dani Pereira to, to Copa America, losing Cascante to Copa America, you know, they've been very, very flat. And I don't know what this game will do for them moving forward. But putting Austin aside really quick, this game, Davi, Away, New York City FC are what is this three now uh, in a row? Three losses on the road, I, I believe. Um, meanwhile, yeah. Chicago are unbeaten yeah. in the last three home games, which I think is very, very interesting, right? You get a, a bad team who knows how to at least get some kind of a result at home versus a team who's decent on the road but recently hasn't been or they've just been not getting the results. So, you being a realistic NYCFC fan, how do you see it going? They're an inconsistent bunch. That's how I see them. And but by that same token, we're an inconsistent bunch. I mean, just look at the goddamn record. Yeah. Nine, <laughs> nine, nine losses in 22 games. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable, sure. in my opinion. We don't have we don't have many draws. We only have two draws. Mm -hmm. the, I think the, the only reason we're up there is because of the 11 wins and the, and the crazy win streaks that we've that we've been able to go on, whether it be winning five five games in a row. All right, you you, you beat the gaunt, the gauntlet of hate. Which is Philly, Toronto, and the Re and the Red Bulls. You <laughs> call, you come out victorious out of that shit. Nine that out of nine. Of hate. I like that. I like that. We're gonna coin that perfect. with MLS. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect <laughs> nine out of nine. Just for just for you to um, you know, and then you absolutely destroy San Jose in, in the last ten minutes of the game. Yeah. Just just for you to come back. And, okay, Columbus is a decent team. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You get fucked by the refs. I mean, these refs are incompetent at times, or or I should say, ninety percent of the time. And then you know, you go out to LA Galaxy. They're a good team. You know. On a short week's travel, you go to LA to Nashville. You go coast to coast to coast. You know it's it's kind of bound to happen. I mean, Hannes Wolf. I was watching the 
NYCFC uh, Views podcast with uh, Glenn Crooks and uh, Roberto Abramowitz. It's a really good NYCFC podcast. Um, and uh, Hannes Wolf from Austria. This is his first first season in the league, and uh, he get he got sick from all the travel. He got he got yeah. sick from the from the travel from going to New York to Austin and coming back. Bro, it's different. It's way different out here. And like, like Musa, you 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 spent time overseas, right? You you know exactly what we're talking about. It's just you know, like playing here in this league, man. It's completely different. Whether you're uh, a player or a fan, I mean, I imagine you resonate with what Dobby's saying right now. But but do you have a clear winner in this one, or is it or is it much closer than that? Um, I think for me, I'm expecting probably NYCFC to win it. I think probably the Chicago win against San Jose was was it San Jose, but. From what I've seen so far in the MLS, um, home teams win most of the time. Yeah, and I mean, a team fair. that's traveled badly has lost so many games traveling. So I think the odds are against it. But from what I've gathered from just being in the league for two years, I wouldn't bet the house for you know NYCFC to to go home with it. And maybe because it's a, a little bit of you know sourness for Chicago, but I can't really give them the the win on this game. That's just to, fair. Just to put this matchup in context for like historical reasons. Yeah. Uh, NYCFC 11 wins, Chicago three wins, six draws. And the last time Chicago won, I believe was 2018. Yeah. No, I, I agree, bro. I, I, historically, actually the head to head, New York runs this. It's, like, it's, like, the, it's the same thing as Montreal, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Now with that said, I would say before, before Klopas, I, I think even like, um, a couple seasons before that, when Chicago was trying to actively rebuild, right? They went out and got Shakiti. They went out and got other players. They brought some academy players up. Before that, they were dog shit for a long time, like for a long time. Like, like it was just you know, I, I couldn't even imagine being a Chicago fan. Like, if I had to deal with what I deal as a with, with as a Dallas fan this season, every season, bro, I don't know. That would be, oh my god, that'd be torture. Yeah, that'd be cruel and unusual punishment. But. I, I think well, that's how Lions fans felt until. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. About that, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it, I kind of agree with what Musa says. Like, you know, you you do have to kind of almost like if you can't pick a winner, back the home team. But and and but the thing is, is like most home teams have some kind of an advantage. Chicago really doesn't. Like, they play in a stadium that's more often than not, at least at minimum, half empty, if that. Like, like it's, it, there's there's not even that big of a turnout in most games. Maybe some of the weather helps them in certain months out of the year. I wouldn't expect summer to be those months. Um, I think it's going to be close, man. I'll be honest. Like, I can see NYCFC taking points, a point maybe for this game. I don't know if it's all three, but I can see them getting something out of this. Because after what happened against San Jose, it's it's like, and it was also a really close call against Philly. I mean, even that, they had to cut, claw all the way back. VAR called a goal back. I mean. And it, you can even go back to the previous game against Seattle. They gave away two penalties and they lost the game. Bro, they have the most PKs against them by by any team. Like they, like no team has more penalties called against them than Chicago Fire this season. That's, so who that's knows? Insane. That might be a storyline this this weekend. I don't really know, but I feel like this is going to be a draw. I you guys smell that? I, I smell a draw. Like I, I don't know. I, I feel. Like I mean, each side. I, I mean, after after last week's fucking debacle, which I thought I thought we played well enough to get a draw. We played well enough. We just didn't have the chances. Or the, you didn't see Giassi like, coming, bro. Giassi. I I I saw it. No, no, nobody else saw it. So <laughs> I, I saw it coming. <laughs> That's Close, wild, but, man. I mean, uh, hopefully, hopefully we win. I, I, I'd, I'd like at least one win. I like at least five points because we have the the next two on the road: Atlanta and Orlando, back to back. And again, a short week's notice where it's two two games in four days, and you're going right. You went from New yeah. York to Atlanta, and you're from Atlanta. You're driving straight down to Orlando. J so July, even... July is so rough, bro. It's so rough for every team with League's Cup. Like, yeah, like and, everybody's yeah. jamming. We have seven games. Dallas has seven games in July before League's Cup gets here. Like, that's wild to me. I hate um, the League's Cup. I hate it. Yeah, it is. I, I like the idea of it. It just needs to be at another time of the year. It needs to be, like, in the off season or something, a tune-up tournament. Like, whatever, right? Call it whatever you want. I just don't think it needs to be in the middle of the season. Or spread the games at, like, every other league around the world. At least does. make it, like, a Europa League. Or yeah, you play a game every five. few weeks or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll take that all day. All yeah, day. Why not? Uh, yeah, I never this through the whole month. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, I will say this as a team who needs players to get back desperately. I'm kind of hoping we get out pretty early, and then you know we can let players come back. Like, I would just, I would just play off. the kids and not give a shit about the tournament. Yeah, probably. Like to yeah. be honest, man, I just, I, I, it, it's not a priority. The U.S. Open Cup was a bigger priority, and we got eliminated from that. Well, the only reason <laughs> Leaks Cup was, <laughs> only reason Leaks Cup was fire last season is because Messi arrived and it just lit the world on fire. League's Cup, yeah, that was right when he had gotten here. And dude, I still remember the game in Dallas like it was yesterday, man. I remember I remember thinking, oh my god, my team is gonna beat Messi. 
and then he just turned it on out of nowhere late. That game. was, by the way, that was his first penalty shootout win at the club level ever. That's it's just it blows it blows my mind. Like I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna see that version of Messi again this year. I don't think so. But I've been proven wrong by him so many times. It is what it is. I mean, I mean, we say that now and then. Yeah, you know, fast forward a few months later, and they're hoisting the cup. He's gonna see the <laughs> video, bro, where we said the two Argentines in this league that are better than him right now are on Cincinnati. He's gonna take that shit. I, I, I called him the goat. I called him the goat. So Messi, don't get mad at me. <laughs> 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 absolutely um honda before we move on man how do you see this one going do not back you, your gun you know what you know what Go buy it. you know what you know what new york city fc got cooked by yassi's artists all right <laughs> what's to say they're not going to get cooked by shakiti somehow Tell nah, me. He's, he's i don't buy playing. that he's i don't buy that he's not playing oh, he's not playing yeah. but either way oh, Yassi's playing? Artists might actually oh, be better, clear bro. of shakiti and mls like i don't think that, that's a hot take like he, he might actually be clear of that man Here's the thing, dude, though, right? Dude, if NYCFC to... away from home, how many games have they won? Realistically, three. Like I get it, three. Chicago Fire. Three, 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 three. Realistically, this should be four. Realistically, it should be. Yeah, but, but it's not that easy. MLS is the type of league where Chicago Fire wins this game. I know, I'm man. It's only right in now. this league. That's what's crazy about it. Like, like anywhere else, man. I, I almost like throw my money on NYCFC, but this could just be one of those games where the Fire reinstill some hope in the fans. Yeah, they're going to reinstill their hope in this game, and then the next game they're going to shit the bed again. Let me ask you guys this before we move on, because this is a great question for this. Can Chicago Fire still salvage playoff hopes if they win this game? No. No. Not at all? No, it's just fool's goal. It'll just be a flash in the pan, and they'll finish 14th again. Yeah, because right now they are three points out of a spot. Yeah, I'd say it's no. not impossible, but Chicago. No, Fire I think them. I think like, the teams above them are better. I think Montreal's better, New yeah. England's better, Nashville's better. Even even a shit Toronto, I think, still can pip them to a, to a playoff spot. So no. Musa, what about you? As, what do you as, think? A, as a city fan, I think anything is possible at this time to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, we saw it with Sporting Kansas City last year, right? I mean, I, Musa, yeah. I don't, you know, I know there's a rivalry there, right? Like it is what it is. But I, I, I didn't hear, know. I didn't hear what you said, so we're all good. <laughs> 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 but you know we saw it last year right like teeth could just go on a run we saw it with nycfc this season right like you guys started off in really weird spot oh, like free. Oh, the cushing free. out was was trending at some times and then like the run the streak that you guys went on the middle of the season it, it I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this right now i think we go absolutely nowhere trophies wise with under nick cushing i don't i don't think we win anything under nick cushing and i think la- i think top last five of the east right now yeah i know we're top five but i want to win trophies you're, yeah. you're in the league to win trophies. We don't you just got to make playoffs, have... bro. At, at that point, yeah. it's one matchup at a time. Yeah, but, I mean, if, if we lose to these guys, I hope they I hope they get Greg Burhalter and they just stick it up <laughs> for the next 10 years. <laughs> wow. I like that. We're going to end it there. That, that, that one was perfect. I, New, I like New, 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 right New, York, New York pizza is better than Chicago's soup or whatever. Oh, easy, easy, easy. No, calma, no, no, calma, no. calma, calma, calma. I, with, with that said, I'm actually going to get Chicago pizza tomorrow night. Um, it's going to be great. Um, now, with that said, <laughs> let's move on. That, that was a great way to end that, that matchup. Uh, it, it got me in a giddy mood now before I talk about my team, which will probably drop me right back down. Um, moving on to FC Dallas hosting the LA Galaxy. Me and Honda are locked in for this one. I will be at the game. I'm excited for it um, because I haven't been to a game in a little bit. We've been on this crazy run of away matches for a while, but um, that's probably the only reason I'm excited. Other than that, I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen, but you can see on your screen where these two teams are at this very moment. Uh, Dallas sitting at 11th in the West. We're coming off of that. 3-2 lost Sporting Kansas City. I will add some context to how that happened. Um, you know, I think it's we're, we're, honestly Dallas is right now the worst team in the league on the road. Uh, very much middle of the pack when it comes to home games, but across the entire league, probably the worst team on the road. Sporting Kansas City might have us beat by like a game, but it's it's very very close. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the Galaxy come off the two-one win over Minnesota, third in the West, uh, looking really good despite the recent El Tráfico loss, and you know. It never feels, t- feels good to get swept by a rival in the season, but you're still in a top three spot. We're wary of this team coming in uh, to Dallas this weekend. We're worried of how good they are. We, we, we've, I think we've seen it even without Ricky Pouge, right? How how um, prolific they can be offensively without their talisman. It didn't really matter, but now he's back, and now we have to worry about that all over again. Honda, I'll, I'll let you give your take before I give mine, man, but you're the away fan coming into this. Um how do you, you know, considering just El Trafico, some of the recent results, getting pushed back, coming off of a, you know, a, a, a close win against a team that is in crazy bad form right now in Minnesota United. How do you feel about your boys coming into this game? Here's the thing, right? Historically wise, FC Dallas, it's always a pain in our freaking ass. It doesn't matter the, how they're coming in. 
And to be honest with you, like if we're going just based off of the season, LA Galaxy should win this. It's not going to be easy. Obviously, your boys are not going to make it easy for us, especially you guys are at home. You guys are in Texas. But uh, yeah, I see Galaxy winning maybe by a marginal difference again, just like they did over Minnesota. Yeah. No, nah, you know what, man? If, if y'all beat us at home, if y'all sweep us this season, we may cancel the show, bro. I don't really know. We might stop, we may stop <laughs> talking about Dallas. I'm not sure. But, bro, it's – I don't know, man. It's – I'll tell you well, – I'll give you the context really quick before I gave my take, and then I'll, I'll, I'll let the other two chime in. Um, if you guys didn't watch the Kansas City game, which I don't blame you, it's two teams towards the bottom of the table. I don't know how many fans actually watched that at home. Um, but we rotated heavily, and it backfired. Um, we rotated basically everybody. Started the kids, you know – we went there with Academy products and, you know, we figured that this, if there is a game to rotate, right. It is going to be against one of the lower teams in the table. Like that just makes sense. If you're going to rotate for a cup match coming up in the middle of the week, you do it against someone like sporting Kansas city. We went down two nil early in the first half, came back, clawed our way back to two, two. And then the final eight minutes of the game, they got a goal came over three, two. Um, and I wasn't super upset about that. Right. Like, we didn't have any of our stars on the pitch, really. No Musa, no Sebastian Legette, no no Yara Mendy, no any of those guys. And we clawed our way back and showed some grit, showed some character. But if you're going to do that, it's because we we turn around in midweek to play the exact same team in the U.S. Open Cup. I expect a dub. Like, I fully expect a dub if you're going to rotate that heavily. And we lost in overtime. And it's it just felt like that whole away trip to Podunkville, fucking Kansas City, respectfully, um, just didn't really work out for us at all, man. It it hurt. It hurt. I'm not even gonna lie. Like that one, that one hurt. Um, it it, it felt like this. This is just the kind of season we're gonna have. You know, I, I don't know if playoffs are in the picture for us. It, it might be the first time in several several seasons that we don't make the playoffs. Um, I don't know, man. It's I'm hoping that we could use this game against the Galaxy as a bounce back, but I'm down bad, guys. Like I'm I'm astronomically down bad. Um, and I think it, you know we're not even fucking dead last, but it feels like it. You know, it it, it feels like this. Musa has no help. If you guys watched even the Open Cup match yesterday, I've never seen him more frustrated. He scored, and he's still trying to – he's giving Xavi or Iniesta-esque passes to other, other players on the pitch, and they just can't convert. Like, this man is on an island in terms of quality on this team, and nobody can keep up with them. Like, oh, man, I don't know. It's I mean, half of your team uh, is out, too, as well, too, from India. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate relying on that excuse, but, like, it, it is what it is. We are literally missing – Velasco, Ferreira, Giovanni Jesus, Liam Frazier, Delgado, and Pomacall. Six of our 11 starters are, are out. Two of our three DPs out. Um, Moose is the only one doing anything. So it's just at this point now where I'm like, I don't know, do we give up on the damn season? I don't want to, but like at some point we got to start trying to, to build around the future of it. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's we're, we're in a really, really weird spot. Two spots out of a, a playoff spot. Musa, I mean, look, we played each other twice this season, man. You've seen this team play. I will say we haven't lost to St. Louis this season so far. That's kind of a dub. Yes, um, <laughs> how do you feel about this game in Frisco? I guess we're all to respect to Dallas. I don't expect them to do much. I'm especially seeing how LA Galaxy just running the West at this moment. With LA, Even though LAF, they lost to LAFC. But I just saw that. I'm just impressed of how they've turned it around from last year, the pack hole to now. Um, and I say welcome to the club for FC Dallas. Um, you, your team might look like your emergency room. So is St. Louis. So yeah. we're, we're all depleted on uh, our starters in DP. So the way I see it is if LA Galaxy and Penn Steel are, you know, feeling it, then it's going to be a long night for Dallas. But <laughs> Losing to SKC, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's Vermees that when he plays the same team multiple times, he just like out coach the other ones, which he did with San Luis. Or, but I'm starting to get the feeling that every time he plays the same team close to each other, he kind of you know brings the experience to beat him. So I don't put too much stock on those lost, um, especially when knowing that everybody's injured. Yeah, but I will definitely say you know. Maybe not to lose faith just yet, but yeah. You, but yeah. But every time you look at your your roster and it says you know you see your injury list and there's eight players and three DPS, that's the same feeling I have when I just have the big F word because I don't say <laughs> it. But yeah, but yes, but yeah. Unfortunately, Dallas. Unless there's you know a godly event that happens, they shouldn't be winning this game, even at home. 
It is MLS, right? We talked about it a little bit before with Chicago. It is MLS. That gives me like like the slightest bit of hope, right? That there's there's a sliver of hope. And like Honda alluded to before, right? Historically, Dallas and 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 Galaxy are MLS 1.0 clubs. There is we have a longer history playing against one another than so many expansion sites even have as a club or a franchise, right? Like we have a long, long history of playing together, years against one another. Um, and you know, it's just one of those things where even as recently as 2023, um, and we weren't a great team, you know, we're like middle of the pack team. And it was, it was just difficult for the galaxy to come here and, and get any dubs. Granted, that was a very different team back then too on their side, but I don't know, man, to me, this, this game, I will be somewhat, I won't say happy. I'll say relieved if we come away with the draw. Um, but if Peck, Paintsel, Bagundes, Jovalich, you know, Bouge, the, the crew is feeling it right from the galaxy's perspective and they come out swinging. I don't know, man. It might be a very, very long, long evening for me. And, uh, and I'm before. just saying that duo has been fantastic, phenomenal for us. I know. Uh, That's crazy, bro. I was crazy. surprised he was not called for the Euros. I was like, what were there? Well, who does he play Peck. for? Is it, is it Slovenia? Who? Jovalich? Uh, oh, Peck. No. I, what is no, what Peck. is Peck? What's, Peck's Brazilian. What is Peck's Brazilian. Brazilian. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, I think with the – with and look, Brazil – Honestly, they could have used as much help as humanly possible with the way they played. But, Peck, to be honest with you, like no, yeah, Peck's you know what? Like, like there were a lot of plays being made from Brazil's side. Maybe they could have used Gabriel Peck. Who knows? Um, I would take a game without Gabriel Peck playing. Like, to be he would have been, been better. He would have been better than Hendrick. I can tell you that. Oh my god, the one pass <laughs> successful. <laughs> it's gonna be a meme forever on the internet. Um, better than Rodrigo, Rafinha. Who else was on that side? Uh, Even Sabio. Sabio was good, but yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of wild. Yeah, Brazil's down bad right now, too. But yeah, anyway, man, I think with this game, I mean, it should go the way, I think, of Galaxy just because of where they are with their form. However, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, the combination of it be a home game for Dallas, maybe having some confidence there, the Texas heat's going to be real. As I sit here and talk, you know, at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, it's still in the 90s. So take with that what you will. Um, and then from there, I'm, I'm also hoping that maybe the Galaxy see Dallas and, and just rotate slightly. They probably won't rotate a ton up front, but maybe there's an opportunity for us to nick a goal or two on a set piece, right? Um, and, and figure out a way to just stay in this game. Uh, Davi, we'll go to you once more before we wrap up here. Just give me a pick, bro. How do you see this one going and why? Um, I mean, this this matchup historically, it's kind of it's down the middle almost. It's like almost as down the middle as you can get. It's like 37 Dallas wins 40 Galaxy wins 13 draws. And it's just a just a bag of mixed results. You could just you could put all the results in like a hat and just pick them out. And yeah. It can happen. That's how long these two teams have been playing against each other. Um I, I I think you'd be you'd be very happy with the draw. Um I think with the with the conditions and like the weather, it could could very much happen. Or you know, MLS is not good at MLS and you know, you could, yeah, Dallas true, could bro. pull off the win, yeah. but um I I I think I'm gonna go draw. I think I think it'll go high scoring too, too. Ooh, you know what, man? And, and and I think it might feel like a Real Salt Lake game too. You know, in the sense that if you were to ask me before this game started, Jose, are you comfortable with Dallas getting a you know a point out of this game against the Galaxy? Yes. And I said the same thing against Real Salt Lake. But if it happens in the same manner where we go up it's early, the context, it's and, context. And you, and you, and you, th you think it's going to be your day, and then they come back because of the quality that they have on their team. It's gonna feel like you lost. It's just gonna feel like yeah, like they, you you're so they, down bad. They scored man. some bangers that day. They oh man, it was crazy. It was crazy. So so yeah, I, I'm actually right there with you. I think it's gonna be a draw. I'll take two two if we get two goals at home. I'll I'll take it, man. I'm really hoping the lads step up tomorrow or Saturday, and we we really see kind of what this team wants and what they're capable of fully. We know Dallas is gonna be in the playoffs no matter what. I want to see Dallas try their absolute hardest, despite all the players that they're missing, to to make a late push. See if it's possible. So we'll find out, man. We'll find out. All right. Let's move on to we have two more matchups to go. This one's pretty juicy, though. Very, two very, very informed teams. We have the Portland Timbers hosting Real Salt Lake, man. Portland could right now be one of the hottest teams in the league. Portland at this very moment have only lost two of the last 10 matches. And you know what's crazy about that stat, by the way? The two teams they've lost to? Dallas. <laughs> Dallas and Minnesota. <laughs> it makes no sense. I'm like, bro, how? Like, you could take down to these other squads, but like these two teams that are just down bad at the moment, it's it's working for you. I don't know. It's it's kind of wild to me. Um, but anyway, you know, with that said, uh, I think you know, Portland being where they are, top five in the West, you have Real Salt Lake who has not slowed down by any means whatsoever, absolutely shellacking Atlanta 5-2. You know, Atlanta losing so much in the last month alone. 
losing a manager, losing Yakumakis, losing Almada, and then you know Caleb Wiley got sold right to Chelsea, who's going to and then he's gonna be on loan to Strasbourg. Like all, all of these pieces, bro. I feel like Atlanta's kind of in a similar position. We talked about Dallas. Atlanta's almost there too. We're not talking about that tonight, but with Real Salt Lake on the road, they're a pretty decent side. But I bet you, I don't know if you guys knew this. Coming into this game, the last five away matches, they've only won one. They've drawn the other four. So you look at this team, and they're going to go to Portland in the packed Northwest in the Rose City, where they're so rampant. Can we automatically, even though they're the second place team in the West, can we automatically say Chicho and the crew are, are going to come in here and, and and set up shop and win? Or or is Portland going to take this one? Honestly, it's a battle of the offenses, unlike the first game that we had. These ones are just, they're just going to go all out. That's yeah. what I like straight up. It's not going to be a, very easy. Straight to shootout out West. Yeah. yeah. Straight shootout. Bro. This is a crazy. This is my big question for this matchup. I want to see how how we feel about this. Um, Chicho right now is sitting at seventeen goals this season, seventeen already. I mean, the man's gonna break twenty. I mean, it's NYCFC, you should have signed him in twenty twenty two when you had the chance. That's so many teams, bro. The Sounders are saying the same thing. I would have taken him in Dallas. Like it really could have been anybody. Like I like I think that. And now we're stuck reason, with Munsef Bakra. Yeah, it is what it is, bro. Like they're so. It's, I, I can make the same case for Diego Luna. Every Texas team got to look at that that player and that man before he came to MLS, and nobody nobody batted an eye at it. Like it's and of course how we didn't we, make the Olympic squad is absolutely criminal. I yeah, think he 100. turned it down. No, so you think he's going to Mexico? Uh, maybe he, he turned it, he only uh, turned down the the I think the practice squad, so he was not guaranteed to play unless someone was going to get injured. But oh. even then, like, would you not want to throw your hat in that ring, yeah. or, or do you, I, maybe, maybe the, the team is just performing so well he doesn't want to disrupt that? I, I mean, don't know. I mean, he's definitely I, good enough to be on that Olympic team, though. Oh yeah, no, I, for sure. Yeah. I think they just, from what I've gathered from out being outside, I think it's there's a lot, probably a lot of questions to ask him why he didn't make it. But I totally understood, you know, he's far enough turning down the practice one because you know Real Salt Lake is doing pretty well too. So you're almost guaranteed to just go and travel with the team and hoping someone gets injured. Yeah. Um, it's just like us. We're our center back. We have Hilbert that plays for Canada. He's been gone this entire time. He has not even stepped a foot on the field yet, but yet we're missing players. So it's like, I think it's probably an Eagle that was kind of struck wrong. And then his team's doing so well, but I think he should have been more than just a practice squad and hoping for He'll, a come back with this. I was quite surprised medal. for him. Yeah, I agree with Davi. I agree with Davi too. Like, like, and I agree with you too. Moose. I, I think you know, there's a little bit of ego in that, hundred um, percent. And yeah, I think that look, this this could be the 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 the, the last kind of nail in the coffin, so to speak, in terms of who he decides to, to really play for the national team level, um, because Mexico need quality players, and Luna doesn't really have a reason to prioritize the U.S. Right, other than the fact that he plays his ball here, um, but you know, Mexico is not very far at all. So there could be some of that there. Who knows? Um, I think that the the most, from my perspective. The most like fucked up story, if you will, was Matson for the for the Dutch national team. Um, like he was an alternate. Kuman called him up because somebody got injured. Uh, he like like was already on vacation. His dad drove like six hours to go get him all his stuff, his cleats and whatever he needed, just to make sure he, he could make it on time. Didn't play a single minute of the tournament, and it's just like. Bro, I could have been I I could have been in Bora Bora somewhere. You know what I mean? I I could have been on vacation. Like, what was the point of this? Um, I, I don't mean, know, I guess man. you go for the well. experience of like how it's like to be. In a yeah, party, yeah. I mean, I mean by that same like, token, it's like there's some ego yeah. there. You know, there's some ego with these players. Like, if you're gonna call me up, I want to be useful and valuable to the team. Otherwise, I've been playing ball for ten months. Give me some time to rest. Or just um, that symbolic, you know, five minutes at the end of the game. You know, as a token of thank you. And I think a lot of teams, national teams, yeah. do it, knowing that you know you've played. I think France did it with Giroud when he did play much. Yep. And then yeah. they gave him that time to say, you know, thank you. Everyone actually had a play. Yeah, here's that. What they did to him, especially going on vacation mm -hmm. and then calling him from there. Usually if it's straight from club to, you know, to the tournament, that might be okay. But he was on Instagram. He was on, a, on the boat chilling. So Yeah, and then I just drop everything and go and then not get a minute. I don't know, man. I would have been a little bit ticked. I, I, I know for a fact I would have been upset about that. I hope so. Yeah. Um. Well, with that said, lads, look, Portland. Undefeated in the last six home matches. They are one of the hottest teams in the West, if not the broader league. But they have a stacked up matchup in this one with a good RSL team that does know, even if they go down, right? We saw it against Dallas. Even if they go down in a game, they're never out of it. So 
Let's get some picks, and then we'll move on to our final juicy matchup here. I'm, I, I really think just with where Portland is, I think this is going to be, you know, one of the kind of the rare RSL losses on the road. You know, I, I, I think that Portland right now, it's, it's going to be a dog fight. There's going to be goals in this one. This is not going to be one of those low scoring games. There's going to be goals in this one. Um, I could see like a three, two, you know, uh, for, this is one of my matches of the week. I am tuning into this one a hundred percent. Um, but I, I do back having just recently played Portland and I don't know, I'll be honest as a Dallas, fan, I don't know how we won, but I'll take it. They're such a good team moving forward. They should have capitalized more chances against us. And I expect at home for them to do just that. So I'm going to take Portland three, two in this one. Um, how do you guys see it? Picks wise hit Honda. And, Exactly the same. Hell yeah. Exactly the same. Musa? I have a on the tie. I'm probably in those high scoring three three. But I think it's still gonna be a, a tie game. That's gonna be close for sure. Dobby? Fuck Phil Neville, RSL all the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey bro, um, I'm I was I was that was me at the beginning of the season. I don't really like I don't really rate Phil Neville, so but he seems to be doing it. I mean, I, I just think he's a cunt. Off the pitch. Would you not take him? Would you not take him at at New York City FC Fuck or, no. or Fuck to no. have your team performing this way moving forward? You wouldn't take that. Per- perform this way, yes, but not have him in charge. Absolutely not. He'll just uh. he'll just complain about the pitch the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's fair enough. That's good fair enough. Though? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I can't say anything. My, I, my, my manager from last year and Xavi Hernandez was doing the exact same shit. So it's like, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Like, the game is game, right? I mean, like, keep, like, keep him away from the national team at all costs, please. <laughs> <laughs> He's no Fair way in that. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, lads. I think we got, we got it there. No matter what, whether you have them win, lose, or draw, this is going to be one where we, I think we expect a, a good amount of goals. We'll find out. And then finally, man, this one, it's got to be the game of the evening, no? Got to be the game. We get a rematch of the 2023 MLS Cup Final. LAFC hosting the Columbus Crew. LAFC, I will say this right now with my chest, they are the most informed team in Major League Soccer at this very moment. There isn't a team that's playing better than them. Even, even more than Cincinnati? Yes, yeah. because of the fact that they're basically all healthy. You know, since he is right now, they're playing well, but they're missing Haglin, they're missing Miatska. At some point, like I just, I mean, while you, you can give, we've given Lucho a ton of credit, Oriano a ton of credit, but at some point you're going to need players outside of them to also step up. And like LAFC had that in bunches. And Here's more importantly, well too, Cincy, right? Literally lost to New England and they barely yeah. scraped a win up against FC Dallas. You got to think about the results as well too. LAFC have gotten some good results. And I will say in that game against Dallas, bro, Dallas should have won that. Like, like, I'll be honest, like, like they, they outshot them, n- not even, like, by a little bit. It was, like, by double digits. Like, we had so many chances, just the kids that were on the field could not convert chances to save their lives. Like, that's basically what it was. We didn't start Ferreira or or Musa that day, and we significantly had more chances than Cincinnati. Um, They just took better advantage. And, like, that's what good teams do, right? But against a team, you know, we look, uh, compared to someone like LAFC, bro, I, don't, I do not see LAFC slowing down. Like, slow, like, right now, they are legitimately, and they're going to get Drew as well because Drew just went out. Yeah, of but, but even without him, they're unbeaten in the last eleven. And I said, I say unbeaten, mean like almost basically straight wins in that eleven game run. They have one draw. Everything else is a W. And so, and that draw came back. I don't know how. Now looking back at it, but it came against Austin. Outside of that, man, it has been or, uh, nonstop. They had that one loss, right, um, to San Jose, which was dude. That's the last loss they took. Was against San Jose back on May fourth. Since then, it has been nonstop LAFC. And look, man, I, I I've been someone very publicly on this show who has backed the Galaxy when I talk about LA teams in general. I've I've given them maybe a little more flowers on this show, but El Tráfico just kind of it almost shut me up. As 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 opinionated as I, as I am on this show, it, it almost just shut me up because LAFC right now they're so hard to stop, and especially at home, especially at home. So with that said, though. Will Fernandez and the crew are no slouches, none, right? Like, this is a championship caliber team. I think they know how to get the job done. But when you think about just where they are at this moment of the season, they have Columbus has won eight of the last 10. So, you know, equally pretty similar form, but they lost to Miami and to Cincinnati. So it makes me want to lean the way of the 3 2 5 2 here with LAFC. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just like reading too much to the numbers. Maybe I need to factor in something else from Columbus's side. Is anyone here backing the crew in this one? So much as I'd love to, I I I just can't do it. I think LAFC get revenge from December. This yeah. is coming from a Galaxy fan as well, too, right? Like, I've been bashing on LAFC and how they've been playing, who they've been facing up against. But in recent form, 
LAFC, they've just been better. And here's the thing. I can't get out of my mind. How the fuck does a 40-year-old Kai Kamara dunk on your fucking heads? How? Bro. How? I don't know. Nobody jumped. That's one thing. Nobody jumped. Like, that That. That goal, which if you, if you were to still frame it, right, still shot it, it's like the perfect picture because he is so clear of everybody in the air. But, yeah, man, Kai Kamara kind of finding his form a little bit. Probably went to the perfect team for him to be able to get chances and just find, you know, re, you know rediscover some of his goal scoring form. If he's doing that, you don't think Giroud's going to do that? Like, <laughs> like there'll you know, be two 40 year olds out there, bro. Upgrade. That's it's a straight crazy. upgrade. Hide your, hide your girls, hide your girls, hide your wives, <laughs> hide, hide, hide everybody, man. Because, uh, yeah, dude, those, center backs, so those opposing center backs might be hiding after seeing him. That's for sure. Uh, it's kind of crazy that, uh, between the likes of Kai Kamara, Olivier Giroud, and uh, Hugo Lloris, you probably have what nearly a hundred years in age on the pitch all at the same time. Yep. That's wild. Uh, but the, you know, again, still dunking on teams, still scoring goals, and then you have Denny Bowanga, who I talked about Chicho earlier being at seventeen. This man's not far behind; he's at fourteen goals. And so you got to think like, how is Wilfred Nancy going to set up for this game? How is he going to set up to compete with this very rampant LAFC side? Um, what What are the odds? And this is, well, well, before we make picks here, I'm just kind of curious. What are the odds that we get an exact same rematch in the 2024 MLS Cup final? Like, like, what are the odds that we get these two teams making it all the way to the end again in back-to-back seasons? I can see it in LAFC side, but I don't see it in Columbus side just yet. I, you think I Miami's think, better? I, I think or, one of since one of since your Miami are gonna make it in the East, and they, I may, maybe RSL maybe they might pull something out of out of, out of their hat in the playoffs. I mean, they've they've done it before. Remember that 2021 run was we were, we were, as well. Too, like, yeah, the 2021 they were one game away from MLS Cup as a seventh seed. So yeah. you can, I, I mean MLS is gonna MLS. So I mean, but the LAFC is by far the favorite to make it back from the West. Um, but RSL might challenge them and they might beat them to the to the MLS Cup this year. But you know it's all MLS and you know it's granted it's still mid July. So we just gotta wait and see. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. We'll find out, man. I think it's gonna be it's an interesting conversation to have, right? Like. Like we were talking so well about Columbus basically up until they lost to Pachuca in the in the Triple C, and since then I feel like we haven't been as high on this team, despite the fact they've won eight of their last ten matchups. And granted, the two that they lost were against truly championship caliber teams. But but maybe maybe we're reading too much into that. I don't really know. I don't really know. Musa, what do you think, bro? Do you think there's anything here for Columbus? Well, like I guess it probably will call it like the battle of the Frenchmen if you think about it. Yeah. Um. I guess my question is how Nancy will kind of put his his team together against Wonga, which they have a long history playing in France, so they know each other um, well historically. Um, and he also knows Hugo Lloris. So I think it will just take how we all talk about Nancy having, you know, the, the, the great coach and knowing how to, to put teams together to play against who he's facing against. I guess now the question will be, if he can actually take Wonga out of his comfort zone, because I think he looks like he's kind of like the, the feeder of either he's scoring or he's assisting. Yeah. And at this moment, he's when he's hot, he's hot. But when he disappears, then you don't see him at all. And that's when LAFC's kind of struggled. I mean, um, to be to be fair, Dante's done it in MLS Cup. Right. You know, yeah. he, he took him out of the game for probably 90% of the game. I mean, yeah, sure, he still got on the score sheet, but I mean, still, I mean, one one hell of a game plan that he came yeah. out there and, you know just that's the only it. question mark i have is yeah. depending not really the players on the field because i think if you go you know player by player lafc has it by far that's, this is and Rock, that's when you like Rock i think it's closer than we're take. making it out to be i i, I actually think i, I think lfc has it but i think it's close it's like the Rock, loss Rocky. of the loss of aiden morris makes this a little more favorable towards lafc for sure yeah um and him going to borrow i'm happy for him i think he'll he'll do great things overseas but you know, outside of that, like there's a lot of like for like we think about individual matchups on the pitch. Like, I mean, Diego Diego Ross is going back to LAFC. Uh, He's going back to LA where, yeah. where it all started in MLS. Yeah. So he might. I mean, you never know. He might cook something up. The three two five two might have it out for him. To be honest, man, I think there's going to be a lot of the fans that are going to be in his face. Maybe he has some chance ready to go. The Tifo might feature him. I don't really know. I think we'll find out, man. But I'm going to be up for this game. I think it's going to be a juicy one. Before we before we get the last question, before we get picks in. Is Wilfred Nancy as dynamic as dynamic as he is? Whether he wins back to back MLS Cups this year or not, with all the recent conversation this week around the U.S. Men's National Team, 
would you take Wilfred Nancy? Is he the, the right type of manager for this version of the U.S. men's national team? Yes and no. I was going to say, if I'm the U.S., I probably would, especially with the manager that they've had. But I don't know if he will get the best out of their player, those players. There's not enough time for him to, like, mold the way the team that he probably would like to. Because, you know, international, you don't have that much time with those players. Yeah. Where, yeah. Compared to he's, clubs. So I think there's only a few, a handful of coaches that he, can. He's just going to get 18 months coming. Because if yeah. you get him, like, I don't think he's going to break contract with the crew. He'll probably just leave at the end of the season. And yeah. it's January 2025. And you just have 18 months until June of 26 to get your team situated and whatnot. So I, I just. So that's why I say no. But like, if if we if we had fired Burhalter like completely last year, and we wanted to bring him in at the start of twenty four, I think yes, he's absolutely perfect for the US seventy. But I think right now, I just think they're better. There's just better options out there for, you know, just some you know for a window that's just a little under two years now for the World Cup. So yeah, yeah, they need a coach with a job yeah. without a job. I, I think point. I think Herb Her Bernard would be the best. Ur- is a, I mean, he's a, he gets, a, I, I actually think, I, I agree with you to an extent. I think he's a, he's someone that should be a top, top candidate, a hundred percent. Um, But for that same reason, I also like Wilfred Nazi as, as a candidate. I think, uh, yeah, it's not a lot of time, but whoever comes in, it's not going to have a lot of time. Like that's, that's kind of given, I think, regardless of what the candidate we're, we're talking about is. Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll get a fat bag for sure though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. But, but what I'm saying is I, I think, and I don't know how, I don't know how Nazi is a man manager, but I, I just, how he, you guys remember the, the, the Cucho situation this season, right? Where they were kind of almost butting heads. He pulled him out of certain games. Uh, didn't even make him available on the bench for a couple of them. I, th- um, I think the club suspended him, no, for a couple yeah, of games. And some of yeah. that leading up to triple C games, right? Where, I mean, these are, these are high stakes games and, you know, not scared to, to make a very, very big decision with one of your most prolific players. Um, that's the type of attitude I think the U.S. men's national team needs, you know, no nepotism. You play the best 11 for what you want to accomplish on the field, and that includes the attitude they give you off the field. Uh, I think that there's there's so much of that that needs to be instilled into this current version of the national team. Uh, they have to really kind of want it, feel like nothing is given, there's no complacency, and they have to work for every inch they're given by whoever this new manager will be. Um, but I can understand how other national team fans would want uh, an international tournament manager. And right now, Wilfred Nancy's an MLS, right? He's in a, se- a season-long club manager position. Um, and that's It's just a very, very different landscape. So not saying he can't do it. I think he can. That's why I'm, I'm making this argument for him. But I can see why others would not have that much faith. So I'm just just, just curious. I want to get you guys' opinion there. What about um, Trundolo, the other side? He's no. Trundolo. No. No? He is the slightest upgrade from Burhalter. I I still have questions about Steve Trundolo without this type of roster. Like... Give he, only him, had, he only had six runs with the lights coming give in. Give him the San Jose roster. Let's see how he does. No, but that, that's bad. That's like really bad. Like, I don't know about that. But like, give him like someone who's like middle of the pack, right? Like, give him um, who's not a – give him Charlotte FC. Give him what, what, what Dean Smith got. And I don't know if he gets the same results. I don't know. I, 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 I don't believe necessarily that LAFC's success is directly attributed to Steve Trindolo. I think he had a great time with the national team. I think as a player, he was a great defender. Um, you know, he will be lauded for for all, his entire national team career. But I don't think right now, with what this team needs in a short window, that he's the answer. You know, he he almost needs to have stars that are ready to go. In my in my opinion, what about you guys? No. So you think it? So if he were to get the job, would twenty thirty maybe be better? Because you know, I guess everybody would be in the middle of their primes and. You know, I kind of hope he doesn't get it at all. But if he yeah, were yeah, to yeah. get it, I mean, my expectation would be that. Uh, not, I mean, honestly, it would be the same as when Burr Halter got hired for the first time, not the second time. The second time, I expected nothing but, but just, just having a pure trash, not trash team, but just like not getting the results that we need to keep him around. But the first time, I was like, he could work out, but if he doesn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and that's kind of how it went, right? Um, I, I like with Trudeau, it, it kind of would be the same vibes. Um, I, I would actually just be, be following the status quo of yeah, the same a, people. Yeah, the same type yeah. of hire that we've had for I don't know how many years now, right? Like whether it's a Klinsman hire, a Bruce Arena hire, Tarundalo, um, I mean, like like the, the list of former players is long. They could probably find any one of those guys. You could throw a dart at any one of those guys, and you know, it, it, you probably get somewhat of the same results. I, I really want a different type of manager. I honestly want like a someone who's not American, someone who has no attachment to these players or 
necessarily even the, the US SF values per se, just someone who wants to win games. That's it. So we'll find out, man. We'll find out. That's a whole conversation for another day. We might have a video on it here on the channel pretty soon. We'll find out. Um, but lads, that is it. That is our pre. Oh, we didn't make picks, by the way. I think are we all collectively in the LAFC train? Yeah. 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 I think so. It will be close. I will say probably yeah, listen, if Columbus win. I won't be surprised. And no nah. for us, you know, but nah. hey. That's just that's just me. I will I I won't I won't talk down about the Columbus crew. They are a championship caliber team. They are the defending champions in Major League Soccer. So you have to give them the respect. But right now, it's just right now, current LAFC's. form, man. LAFC is on another level right now. So I think we're gonna have to go that way. Um, I'm gonna say it's gonna be pretty close in two one. I think all we're all pr pretty much in that boat. Yeah. All right, man. That is it. That is our in-depth preview for today's episode. Let's go through quick fire predictions and then we will be out of here. All right, let's get the first one up. It's kind of an interesting one. Montreal hosting Atlanta. Oh, give me a draw. Yeah, this is going to be a boring draw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to say that, yeah. Um, I'll oh. give Montreal their flowers. Like, it's going to be a narrow dub, and Atlanta continues to suffer, which will enable them to move in the market. Watch this space. All right, D.C. hosting Nashville. Give me Nashville. D.C. is just kind of close, actually. Um, I will also say Nashville. I'm on Nashville. 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 Yeah. Nashville? All right, there we go. Nashville all the way around. The, the road team taking it. New England hosting Orlando City. Orlando's been better away, but New England. Give me the Rebs, Give me the Rebs. Give, 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 give me the Rebs. Yeah, give me I'm Porter, there. man. Porter masterclass incoming. Musa? I've, I've not followed much of either, but since I will be traveling to Orlando, it probably will watching one of their games, so I'll just stay on their good side and <laughs> we'll just make it a 1-1 yeah. a, a one -one tie. Oh, okay, all right. That way if they see me in their stadium, you know. Hey, yeah, you were you were lukewarm, bro. You were even killed. No hot takes here. I like it. I like it. Uh, Toronto hosting Philadelphia. This one's maybe a trap the, game potential. Battle of the mids. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna continue my agenda. I'm gonna I'm gonna back Philly, even though I fucking hate them. Uh, Nick Cushing broke Toronto. So you know what? Since win. you're gonna back your agenda, I'll back mine. I'm gonna go with Toronto. Okay. Same. Same, bro. Respect Give me it. Toronto. I can't stand Jim Curtin. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna back Toronto. Toronto see oh. this one. Musa? Yeah, I'm on Toronto too. Yeah, the Canadians take down Jim Curtin, and I don't. I, I actually saw that Jim Curtin was like in the top ten shortlist or whatever for the yeah, international but team. Yeah, but that's Doug McIntyre who takes him seriously. <laughs> yeah, either way, <laughs> keep that man away from the U.S. men's national team. All right, yeah. uh, like he doesn't get to choose his pull of players in Philadelphia. You see what it's like. He doesn't get to choose his players for the national team either. I mean, he does. This, to is, extent, this but... is what happens when Pendag doesn't get twenty penalties a season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's just it's I don't know. I'm I'm totally out on that, man. I don't, I don't want to see him anywhere any any of my national teams, uh, either one, Mexico or U.S. Um, all right, Austin hosting Seattle. This was actually interesting. A lot of implications of this one. Zardes will go back to Aslani FC, and it's going to be a Seattle win. Interesting, interesting. I don't know, man. Maybe he builds on this a little bit. Uh, no, it, no, it is, it is no, a Q2 though. It's, it's no, a Q2. It's no. a hard place to win. It's, it's Jaisi Zardes in 2024. He's he's playing for Aslani <laughs> FC. Aslani <laughs> FC over here. Um. Oh, this one's close, man. I'm gonna say a yeah. draw. I'm gonna say one one. Yes, he's already not gonna do anything. All right, but I still see Austin taking it just for the simple fact that they are at home. Yeah. Seattle, up and down. Austin as well. But yeah, again, S Seattle has found a way to claw back. You know what it was, bro? It was that comeback win against Dallas, mm -hmm. like the three two at Lumen Field, the comeback. And since then, man, it's three three straight wins. Um. No, I'm I'm gonna stay with the draw. I don't, I don't see them losing, but I, I think the Q2 is still a fortress, man. It's still tough to go there and win. Musa, it's an Austin win. Austin I'll win. It. I think they'll, right. they'll just ride there. This is seventh versus ninth, right. man, in the West. Like, there's some playoff spots up for grabs in this one. We'll see how it all nets up. Um, yes, but I, I I think uh, backing Austin's not a bad shot. Houston hosting Minnesota. Houston. Give me Dynamo, bro. Give me Dynamo. Houston. Yeah, Minnesota has fallen so hard. Like. They were two at one point, and they're getting their striker back. I mean, they're yeah, but almost too late, bro. They're at tenth now, and it's like I mean, to be fair, are making up points. It's like just now. one point. It's just one point. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. But there's just a lot of ground to make, bro. They had one of the hottest starts in the league, and now it's just like, man, it's crazy. But anyway, are we all Dynamo or no? Yeah. 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 Musa? I'll go Minnesota. Okay. Just all right. Of it. A little hot take. I like that. Yes. I like that. Speaking of hot takes, St. Louis hosting Vancouver. Mm, uh, give, me, give, give us one. begin what yeah, yeah you begin. St. Louis go ahead man I, I will put it out there that if any St. Louis player gets to watch it or anyone watches it from St. Louis they better win this one <laughs> you get whooped away 
will be at the stadium. It will be a sold out again. It has to be a win. It has to be a win. So what's it the score? To, what's the it, score? I'll say a two to one because we leak goals anyways. So let's Fair. make it two to one and or else we'll have to talk. This is 12th against six in the West. It's really interesting. I, I, I think when you're in a position like St. Louis, you don't care what the scoreline is. You just want to win. Yeah, scores don't matter. I, Dallas in the same spot too, bro. We, we don't care. Just just want to get the dub. doesn't really matter if we get scored on or not. Um, I, I'll be honest. I think St. Louis gets the 11th draw of the season. I think it's going to be a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2. Two, two. I think Vancouver is just efficient. It doesn't even matter if they're like, – they don't even know what home or away is. They just – they score in these little bunches and they don't do anything. Score another one. It's just it's a, they're a really weird team, so they're hard to account for. I just think they're going to get one or two in this one. St. Louis will too, um, but I'm gonna, I think it's gonna if, be if one you want to give us two. some draws in New York, I'll happily take it. I'll, I'll take it more than <laughs> <my> loss. <laughs> Let's um, not forget Berkey was not playing. Yeah, I guess is he back, back for this one? Back of keeper was playing. It's in question. It's still in question because he practiced mm. with the team, but I think it was the turf also that he was staying away from. And he's gonna be an all star. So like, I wonder. Um, I don't. I don't think he's saving himself for that at all. But like, you know, it's just like it's one of those things. That another obligation he has as a player. Um, we're getting some of our center back back. Also. That'll be good. So the one versus Vancouver was a makeshift. Yeah. So yes. All I'll right. Well, there you go. We'll find out. So uh, Davi, draw, draw, draw. Something is drawing me towards Vancouver. Something is. Drawing me. <laughs> all right. All right. It's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is 100 recorded we'll find out uh colorado hosting the red bulls i know how davi's going oh god it's uh i mean it's chris chris armas against his old club why why yeah. did you have to fire him red bulls he was a legend for you guys oh stop yeah, he would have uh, just never been a legend anywhere that this man has gone do not use he that don't put he them just together pounding them into the ground a slotty <laughs> fc would have been the red bulls um, so your score line Give me Colorado, a clean sweep in New York or New York, New Jersey, 2 0 Colorado. That's not a bad scoreline, actually, depending on how that one goes. Um, Honda. Omir Fernandez gets a brace, by the way. <laughs> Give me a draw. Give me a draw. All right, Musa. I hate to say it, but I think Colorado is going to take it. The way the Red Bull system, it looks like Colorado kind of acing it at this moment with the counterattacks, and they're scoring a bunch. So. Plus, and Armas, he scored three of us on us, so I hate to say it, but Colorado is... Armas is a former Red Bull guy, so he knows how they operate. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Not, not even just that. I, the reason I'm picking Colorado on this one, I think it's going to be close, but you talk about Diego Luna getting snubbed. In my opinion, Cole Bassett also got snubbed, and I think he's having probably the best season um, on that Rapids roster besides maybe George Mihaljevic. Getting to see a teammate get picked at one of those alternate spots, not alternates, but like the overage players that can go, the three spots they get for that, to see a teammate who can go know that you're supposed to be kind of be there as one of the youngsters in this league who's who's stepping up and not get called up, it feels like a snub. I think there's going to be a little bit, a bit of that factoring, and he's going to prove himself. So I think it's going to be Colorado at, at Dick Sporting Goods Park. We'll find out. And then finally, we said Battle of Mid earlier. It's probably, it's probably just Battle of Down Bad. San Jose hosting Kansas City. <laughs> oh, um, God. This one's tough, bro. This one's tough. I, I don't know if anyone's watching this one. This, this is the late game, too, man. I, I don't know. Bottom like, two of the West. Aslani <laughs> FC. Aslani <laughs> FC written all over it. Yeah, this, uh, is, this is bad. Literally the bottom two in the West. Um, I would say no, no, but San Jose is too shit to keep a clean sheet. True. So. Very true. <laughs> Very true. I mean, but yeah. somehow they did it in the last game, so. Yeah. Yeah, against Chicago. I mean, I don't know. That's also kind of a weird game. I guess another team was kind of down bad. Like, like, they, they me, just goes gives without scoring sometimes. I mean, give, give me uh, Kansas City. And keep in mind, Basong is suspended for this. I forgot to tell you, know, if you guys didn't watch the game. Anybody see he like shoved the shit out of out of Paul Ariola? Bro, that was hilarious, by the way. Um, if you guys didn't see it, like throw in like, boom, back. But bro, he was bro, he so he was like attacking us. Or like just threw it straight in his face. I, that was <laughs> I was golden. I loved every minute of that. And then he just shoved the shit out of him. Um was it like a Jules Kunde to uh Jordi to, Alba? To, to Jordi Alba, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very, very simple. Although it would have been better if he pulled a Kunde and threw threw the ball at him. That would have been mm -hmm. hilarious. I think yeah, that would have yeah, been, yeah. that would have sent me actually watching the game. But no, he sh he just shoved him down. Um, either way, red card suspended, not available. Um, so Kansas City missing a piece there. Just That's because they have to travel, I'm going to go with San Jose. But it's going to be like a one nil and very minimal chances. I'm going to say it's going to be a boring one nil for San Jose. I'm going boring one nil KC. Yeah, okay. I was going to say just for bias purposes, I'm going to put KC. Oh, the Cali guy. Yeah, of course. Um, Musa, how do you feel? I absolutely cannot say Kansas City is going to. 
<laughs> Gotta that, stay on brand. The agenda. Yeah. The agenda. All and right. plus, and plus, they've played extra. Um, so yesterday they played extra. They had to wait because of the weather. So that bro, means that was crazy. they have a short term yeah. traveling. Is that why the game ended like at two a.m. Yes, bro. I was so <laughs> mad. You know how mad I was just to wait like three hours for the game to resume. And I was like, oh my god. So man. he was. So, hey, I was happy because I put a podcast right in between it. So yeah, I, 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 I guess it problems. worked out. Yeah. We, we, we were actually playing decently, like right before they stopped the game for like weather. And then I was like, watch, this is gonna throw off our entire game. Watch, I, I just I can't wait for this to happen. Um, yeah. and sure enough, but. Yeah, I think San Jose should should take it because I don't think Kansas City with playing that much and traveling all the way to the West Coast. I, you know, but I cannot give any justification. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, just back to the agenda, bro. Yes, back to yes, the agenda. Yes, 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 Saint, Saint Louis hasn't been that good. I think I think finishing above KC would actually make 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 the season feel better. It would. It would, yeah, bro. Hey, July twentieth is yes. There That's you the go, man. Game. There you go. Either way, no matter what, trust me, especially with the, some of the St. Louis City fans in our comments, which, by the way, if you haven't done so already, let us know if you disagree or, or agree down in the comments below. But I, I get into arguments all the time with uh, with St. Louis City fans who they're only they only ever chime in really loudly when there's like a Kansas City clip, like a Cavincho <laughs> clip pops up on the timeline <laughs> from our show. And it's like from two months ago, but they're like, Oh, you know, we're still ahead of you. I'm like, guys, we're bragging about like 12th and 14th here. Like, I, I don't know if this is like really the spot. Like, you know, like there's guys, no pride guys, in this. Kevin Kim, Kim just fucked off to watch Copa America. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Argentina. Hey, He's got Argentina. Yeah, hey, yeah. Kevin just fell so bad he moved to the East Coast. Hey, I don't blame him, bro. Oh, I don't shit. blame him. If you if you have to watch Ooh. 40 Kansas City, I mean, be this bad. I don't want to live in Kansas City at the same time. Like, I, I'd rather live somewhere that's at least a little cool to live. You know what I mean? So the New York move was definitely, you know. I'm sure very, very welcome from his side. But look, man, either way, lads, that's it. Those are our predictions. And guys, like I said before, if you haven't done so already, like the video down below, subscribe to the channel, weekly predictions videos on Goals TV's YouTube channel. And look, we're featuring different creators every single week. Musa, I can't thank you enough, man. You came in today. You held it down for St. Louis. Uh, I'm excited for um, when we get to play you guys in Leagues Cup, but We'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. We've, you know, like I said before, the, the show even started today. There has been a clean sweep against St. Louis this season. That wasn't the case last year. I have no idea what to expect uh, in that I'll tournament. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, at the end of the day, I, I kind of hope Dallas goes out early so that I, I can just, we, our guys can just relax for a month and get back to healthy. But we'll find out. But look, either way, lads, great show today. And if you haven't done so already, like I said before, comment down below. Let us know what you think. But from everybody here at Wake Up MLS, that is our show today. That's Honda. That's Dobby. That's Musa. My name is Jose. We'll catch you guys next time.